Well, welcome everyone to Cisco's Virtual Kitchen. We're back, Little Butcher. Good morning. Good morning, Darren. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm not. I'm not crackly. Uh, not that I've heard so far. <laughs> okay, no crackly. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna just turn it over to you. What are we doing today with the little awesome. butcher? Awesome. So yeah, this morning we're gonna work on some more of the butcher's block Angus Reserve. So the same. Um, a brand that we did the last time as well. Um, so the Butcher's Block Angus is a, a triple A, 100% Canadian beef. Um, it's sourced from uh, only, or produced, sorry, manufactured in only um, one plant in, in the High River uh, Cargill plant. Um, so yeah, lots of consistency. We saw that in the last time when we were cutting the ribeyes and the stripling. Um, very consistent product, consistent sizing, consistent marbling, consistent grading which is like so important for someone uh, in the food biz. So um, we're gonna start with the inside round this morning um, or top round. Uh, we're gonna just start by completely trimming up the top of it. Um, so for someone in food service, so particularly in restaurants, um, this is a great roast cut uh, for doing, yeah, like roast beef, uh, roast beef plate service or a um, roast beef to slice and do beef dips or sandwiches of any kind. Um, this cut particularly, as opposed to the uh, bottom round or bottom flat, is good because it has a very consistent grain. So you can even, I don't know if you can see right now, but it's kind of starting to show the grain underneath all this fat here, but it runs mm -hmm. uh, in one direction basically, which is very easy to, uh, to slice up after it's been cooked. Um, yeah, so some other ones, um, at the bottom flat kind of ends up having two pieces where one, the brain runs one way, and then it kind of turns and starts going in the other direction. So for someone who's maybe a little newer, uh, to the kitchen, um, you know, learning how to slice that may take a little bit more time. Uh, it might be a little bit, um, more risky for the business owner or the chef to have new people, uh, slicing those after they've been cooked and uh, are ready for service. So, yeah, so this guy, we're going to um, trim up the fat and trim up all the silver skin and stuff on the top. I am going to keep the, the nice pieces of fat off to the side here. Um, so that will be great for the, the cooking of it. All right, so the top is basically cleaned Taren, up. Yeah. Taren, you said nice pieces. Yeah. Is there bad pieces of fat? <laughs> oh, I mean, the, the thinner pieces of fat, right, that are like this here, yeah. I wouldn't get much use out of that, right? I wouldn't okay. I wouldn't call that a good piece of fat, I guess, but a nice kind of thick, thick piece of fat that you can lay on top of the roast. And then as okay. it's cooking, you'll get all the, the drippings and stuff off of that. Um, nice. So yeah, and then there's some fat that's just not as nice of a texture. So. Uh, okay, so um, we are just going to flip it over now. Um, clean the entire bottom as well. So this is kind of the boring part, I guess you could say. But as I'm doing this, I'm going to try to start about two thirds of the way down the piece. And then I can kind of cut the last third towards myself. You maybe don't want to cut towards yourself as often, of course. Uh, okay. So the more you can cut away and down, the better. So we'll get all this cleaned up. And then there's a bit of a vein, I would say, is the, the hardest part on this piece to cut is the vein that's kind of in the back of it. Um, and after it's cooked, it does get very tough. So you really do want to clean that vein out of it. Um, so I'd say that's the biggest, the biggest thing besides the just the trimming of the outsides, which is fairly easy. Um, that's the biggest thing that you want to take care of. So if I can show you, there's kind of this V at the top there. So that's where that vein or artery will um, okay. sit. Yeah, so we're just gonna kind of follow that fat and this seam here. And we can take this basically right out just by following that. Now, Taryn, I have a question for you. Yeah. So that's the vein right there. Mm -hmm. That's the one, you can't do anything yeah. with it or what do you do with that? It's no, it's not nice. I mean, I can trim this up and get a little bit of um, trimmings for grinding. Um, or you could put that into your making broth or soup, right? Cause you'll get the flavor from that, but that that's not edible. It's so thick okay. and it just toughens up, uh, 
uh, as it cooks. So you definitely don't want to be cooking that into it and having someone accidentally uh, sl slicing it up and throwing it on the customer's plate. That's a yeah, big Very no cool. no right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is remove the cap that sits on top of the round. So you can see there's a bit of a seam here and a, a cap here. So I'm gonna start at the end where this chunk of fat is. We're just gonna kind of open it up and then we're gonna kind of start seaming it, they say. So I'm gonna run my knife slowly and as I pull up, I'll be able to see just some little bits of fat loosening and mm -hmm. I'll keep running my knife just along that to remove this whole cap. And on the end, once we kind of start getting to the end, it'll turn into a little bit of a meatier piece. I'll show you after I get it off. Um, but that can I, can I, butcher, can I ask you a quick yeah. question? Can I ask you a mm -hmm. quick question there? Mm -hmm. That knife technique you're doing, mm -hmm. I don't see yeah. that all the time. Is that is what what is that? Like tell that, us a little that, more about that. That, so that's just the practice of seaming. So like every okay. muscle that's attached on the cow is yeah. going to have a seam somewhere. Um, so when you get to know all those parts um, mm -hmm. and, and you do, do more whole animal butchery, um, it's just so easy to be able to do that. So just like hacking through different cuts. Nice. Um, and it really like, it really does. You'll hear it when we do the sirloin a bit more too, but it it almost just pull you could almost pull some of the things apart. So it's it's made to come apart that way basically. And then you just use the knife to just help you get it all the way apart. So it's good. Um, so with the cap here, so we have the cap, but there's also a bit of the uh, round meat on there. Some butchers might refer to this as like the loose meat. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see again, there's a bit of a, a seam here. So that's where the calf will separate from that meat. And I'm just going to cut that separate there. So now we have a little bit more trim. Again, this is great for doing burgers or uh, any kind of grinds. We get heavy on our trim here. It's good. <laughs> and then the cap. So what we do with the cap here at the shop is pound it out really good. We'll trim both sides really clean, pound it out real flat, and then uh, stuff it with like a cheese mixture. Uh, so we do like a Florentine mixture, which is spinach and artichokes and cream cheese and some Parmesan cheese. And then we'll roll it up to a nice piece and then tie it. And we get some nice little pinwheels. So I actually did a couple earlier just so we could see. But after we've cleaned it and pounded it thin and put the stuffing in it, it makes these beautiful little portion pinwheels. So for food service, this could be kind of hard because you only maybe get five or six out of one mm. piece. Um, but that could be a, a fun little appetizer that's a new thing on a menu. Um, it's really great in the butcher shop too, though, because someone can buy just two for their dinner at home and, and they're happy with that. So that's a fun way to use up the cap. You could also do stir fries with it. It has a really nice grain again, like we're talking about with the roast. So stir fries would be good with it uh, or stewing meat as well. Not as big on it for kebabs because it can be a little bit thinner, but uh, really great for stir fries or fajitas. Um, all right, so the last part of the inside round then is we're gonna cut it into a few roasts. So I think depending on uh, what you're using it for, you can either cut this into two or three. Um, two would obviously give you some bigger slices, wider oh, wow. slices, so maybe Maybe if you're doing it on a hoagie bun or something that's a little bit mm -hmm. longer and you want to do a nice beef dip, you could just cut it in half and string it. But we'll cut it into three today. So we kind of get three even pieces. And so that's really easy for someone to cut. We'll string one just so we can see. Uh, but then that makes a nice easy slice after for the, for the line cooks and the people who are going to be serving it. So one last little bit of trimming. So then we'll take the string. Um, it doesn't have to be a proper butcher's knot, you know, as long as it gets it nice and tight around it. Um, we'll probably just do five or six. My first one didn't go there, of course. Uh, we'll just do five or six um, knots. And this will also help to even the piece out a little bit. You can see it kind of tapers off the end there. So we want to try to even it out as best possible to get a nice 
uh, even cooking on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, or else, yeah, you'll end up with one end that's a little bit more well done, one end that's a little bit more medium rare, which might be okay if you're do yeah if you're doing beef dips and stuff because you'll probably dip it in the jus and it'll cook itself a little bit too, which is delicious. Uh, watching that uh, intro commercial made me a little bit hungry. There was lots of good steak cuts <laughs> <laughs> on it. I was like, oh, uh, it's turning out to be a sunny day. Maybe we'll have to have a little lunch barbecue, I mm -hmm. think. <laughs> so, Taryn, Taryn, when you're tying mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. is there some things that people do wrong when they're tying beef? Uh, I think just depending on the cut, either being too loose or too tight. Like, you don't want, um, want to be able to really, I can't stick my finger underneath mm -hmm. this knot. So on a cut that's a little bit more sturdy, um, like the leg cuts, you want to mm -hmm. tie it nice and tight again, like I was saying, to help it even out. Uh, but when you're tying something like a tenderloin, if you're going to tie that, you want to be so mm -hmm. gentle because if you yank on a tenderloin, you can almost pull right through it. So you don't want to be doing that with something that's a little bit more um, fragile and tender. So, okay, so we have the piece we have our roast here. I'm going to trim just a little bit off of the end because it's a little uneven, like I was saying, but just enough there. Uh, again, you could use that for stew or grinds. It's beautiful grinds to add with your fat. And yeah, we have nice, beautiful tied roast. So after it's cooked, you know, remove the strings and then the cooks and line cooks can just follow the lines that are still left on it for slicing. And then you'll have a beautiful, beautiful roast beefs there. All right. So yeah, and the other thing, sorry, I was saying about the fat, right? So if you're going to cook it, mm -hmm. I would personally just lay the fat on top. I wouldn't tie it on because then uh, if you've seasoned it or anything, you're going to lose the seasoning when you take the fat off, right? So I would season the roast, tie it up, and then just laying the fat on top. And then it'll get all the juices, all the drippings. If you want to make your gravy afterwards, get everything out of it there, which would be tasty and delicious. <laughs> We've actually had quite a few people coming in and just buying pounds of fat really? to just be eating. Apparently it's a uh, part of the carnivore diet. So oh. yeah, it was very interesting. Yes. They sear it with some pepper and away they go. <laughs> well, we've made every other kind of meat right. usable, yeah. right? Like we've right. used, <laughs> why not Why fat? not the fat? Why not? Right? <laughs> exactly. All right, so we're going to move on to the uh, top sirloin. This is also known as the rump in some areas and some countries. Um, it's beautiful Back cut, the very versatile. Uh, the the rump side of the cow, <laughs> yep. So, it's, yep, it's, it's just on top of the leg uh, at, the, at the end of the um, the short loin. It makes it a long loin having this touch. So it's got a few different muscles that we can seam out, again, like we were talking about. Uh, and create a few different uh, value adds for, mm -hmm. for our restaurants. Um, so yeah, again, we're gonna start by just cleaning up the bottom of it. There's definitely some silver skin here along the bottom and some kind of bigger chunks of fat or pockets of fat. Now silver skin is completely useless. Yeah, I, I, again, like we, we use it at the shop um, for our broth. So we'll basically anything that we won't grind. So something like this, you know, maybe it has the tiniest little bit of, of nice red meat on it, but uh, it's mostly just silver skin. Um, we'll throw that into our broth just for a little color and flavor along with some beautiful bones. Um, but other than that, maybe dogs might want it or dog food. It might be good for dog food, but, uh, but yeah, not really edible for, for humans. Um, yeah, not enjoyably edible, I guess you could say. Uh, okay, so I clean up the bottom a little bit. Next, we're going to remove a couple um, little muscles that sit on top. Um, they're referred to sometimes as like the mouth meat of the um, steak. So I like to start kind of down at the bottom here. There's a little bit of a seam, again, seaming that runs inside. I try to use just a smaller knife when I'm seaming usually, so I don't accidentally make a big gash into it where I don't want to. So I'm just taking off the first little muscle here. What kind of so, knife are you using there, Taryn, for that? Um, I use a six inch um, stick knife and it's a, I, I usually use a firm knife. There's really flexible ones. 
okay. and they're semi-flexible ones. Um, but I like the firmer ones. Um, but it's just a, just an ad, pretty average knife that you can get at any any um, food equipment store or butcher butcher supply store. Um, yeah, very handy very to cool. have. Yeah. Very okay. Cool. So yeah, I've taken the the first little piece of the mus uh, mouse meat off, a little muscle. Um, I don't I don't love this for much. I would usually grind this. Um, I have heard people say it's um, similar to maybe a beef cheek, where it's nice and nice and grain, lots of striations there. And it's good to be slow braised, but if you're gonna make a dish for a restaurant out of this, you probably need, you know, 10 or 20 of those, depending on how much uh, you go through, right? So you could play with it a bit and, you know, test it out, braise it and try maybe make like a grilled cheese sandwich with a braised sirloin mouse meat. I don't know if you wanna call it mouse meat, but anyways, I would just turn this for grind myself usually. The next piece, however, that we're gonna take off is a little bit nicer. So again, it's just another, small small muscle that sits on top again we're gonna seam so i'm pulling at the meat and i'm just cutting mm -hmm. where the fat meets the meat or the, the silver skin meets the meat so this one is just a nice little piece it only really has the silver skin on the top and the bottom so this one to me is a nice one for um, kebabs or stir fry for sure um, so again if you wanted to use it to maybe like grill and then put it uh, on top of salads, you just need quite a few of them. So if you're going through a lot of, of sirloins, I think you have a little bit more uh, options there than if you're going through maybe 10 or 12 butts a week, right? But mm -hmm. then that's only 10 or 12 salads still. So it's not a lot, but for me today, we're gonna just uh, cube this up and we're gonna put it onto some skewers at the end. But yeah, we wanna remove all the silver skin that's there. We don't really wanna leave anything on. I'll try to make our skewer sizes as even as possible, of course. All right, so we got a little bit of skewer meat there, cob meat there. All right, so next we're gonna remove the kanya or the coulette or the sirloin cap or the rump cap. It's fun that Thank there's you. so many different names for everything, but you can see here again, this kind of nice um, strip of fat in the middle. Mm -hmm. We're gonna seam this apart. And this one, like I was saying, you can almost just pull, I don't know Serious. if you can hear that crackling, yep, that there yep. is satisfying sound. So you can pull it mostly apart and then you can kind of see, it's Ooh. like almost like spider webby looking in there. Yep. So I'm just gonna yep, just run my knife gently down there and it'll just basically break itself apart. So really? now we have the two pieces. Yeah. So that's, yeah, again, another great example of the seaming. So. So we'll work on our cap for a minute then. Um, beautiful, beautiful cut. Tasty, uh, just as being part of the rump is delicious and flavorful. It has this nice cap of fat on the top, which again, um, I love. <laughs> Makes it nice and flavorful, will give you that juiciness. And it almost can look like a little New York strip line. It's almost like a mock, it does. right? Almost like a mock yeah. New York strip line. So what we'll just do is trim the, the silver skin and the gristle. It almost That's looks like Long side. Island. Yeah, there's, I know, there's so like, many different. <laughs> it looks like it looks like Long Island from like the sky. <laughs> In the state so we'll world, call we'll yeah. call it. There you go. We'll call it Long Island. There we just, you just re rename it again. Yeah, we'll, we'll have yeah. a twelfth name for this cut. That one just <laughs> now, Taryn, do you see <laughs> yeah. do you see sometimes people not taking the the top off and just cutting steaks out of it that way? Not as much lately, but definitely, used, yeah, that used to be a thing they would do for sure. And maybe a little bit more in grocery stores and some of the bigger grocery uh, stores, uh, but more of the smaller Botu grocery stores and butcher shops. Um, I would hope no one's cutting the whole thing. Um, you can see that when it's together, sorry, I should have shown this before, but mm -hmm. the grains run in all different directions. So this uh, cap, the grains running this way, mm -hmm. you have grains this way. So if you were to just slice this, it would be a very poor eating experience for the customer chewy, because they would, chewy, right? right? They wouldn't know which way to cut it. So yeah. it'd be very hard for the customer to uh, decipher what they were doing with it and to actually have a good experience with it. In it. So separating them out is the best way to go because nice. they'll have the best, yeah, best eating experience. Um, I will as well quickly say about the sirloin. So 
the butcher's block reserve Angus. Um, a few of the cuts have a certified tender as well. Um, I know we talked about that quickly the last time too, but for me as, as a business owner, you know, your restaurant owner, the consistency of a product is so important and it's so, um, so much nicer um, when it's consistent, right? And you know, mm -hmm. You know your customer is going to have a good eating experience every time if it has a certified tender quality as well as being like the AAA and the, the top two thirds of the AAA. So this product, I think, would just like take the ease out of it um, and you wouldn't be worried, you know, about what you're serving. So beautiful cuts. And yeah, nice, nice marbling in there. So we're going to start cutting the Cania or the Coulette uh, or the Sirloin Cap against the grain. We always want to cut against the grain. I'm just going to do about one inch slices You can see this beautiful cap of fat here um, to your preference. You know, you trim off a little bit of it. These ones may be slightly harder to portion. So you may want to have two sizes on your menu mm -hmm. or if you get a oh, big enough gosh. one. Yeah, you could definitely um, let me see what these are weighing at. Uh, you could definitely cut some of the bigger ones in half if you want to make a smaller one. So they'll have bigger sizes. So that's about 12 ounces. And then the smaller is about 8 ounces. So that's not bad, actually. Um, but yeah, so I would probably trim off some of this fat. But that's part of part of the sirloin cap is that it's going to have this beautiful fat cap on it. So you don't want to go too heavy. So I trimmed it down a little bit there. It still has you know, a third of an inch, almost even half an inch, because I just love that on it. Um, but that's what you want those to look like in the end. Save your fat for your burgers um, or your bolognese, etc. And then the end of the cap, I'm just going to trim off of the fat here. And we're going to use that as well for kebabs. So out of this whole sirloin piece, we'll kind of have a couple different muscles working together to create our kebabs in the end, but you'll still get... Uh, a few nice little pieces and when i was playing with it the other day and just thinking about uh how we could show versatility in these cuts i kind of decided more so doing uh, like a smaller kebab so more mm -hmm. maybe an appetizer kebab would be would be good because you never know how much you're gonna get out of it so so making a bigger kebab you know maybe you only get five big kebabs out of it but you could get 10 you know appetizer size kebabs so all right, so moving on, I'll move those pecanias in just a second. We're going to finish cleaning. So you really want to clean, again, all the silver skin uh, off of the top of here and most of the fat as well. Um, in a butcher shop, you could maybe decide if you want to leave some of them with a little bit more fat. But I think if you're going for a consistency in a restaurant, uh, having it all trimmed will just make it way easier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so we have our cap we've cut up now. Wipe up my little board here. Cap, which way they look good. So now we're moving on to the center. Um, so we're still going to seam this down one more time. You can kind of see again, there's a bit of a line running down this piece. Uh, and this is going to make a little like eye, or I heard some people saying that they called it like a a sirloin chateau, like a chateau brion, which is with the tenderloin, um, but mm -hmm. with sirloin. So once we seam this apart, we'll kind of get one nice little piece, and then we'll have the bigger center after as well. So for really? this one, yeah, this one works a little differently for cutting. So if you're doing the sirloins and trying to separate them, uh, I'm going to almost use my knife to push the meat down. So there's a line of silver skin that runs through. I'm just going to find it at the top here, and I'm going to push my knife sideways while cutting a little bit to kind of unveil this piece of silver skin in there. So we're slowly just going to push the meat and slice a little bit. And once I get down to the bottom, then I can slice right through. So now we have two pieces. So you can see here we've revealed this nice bit of silver skin there. Again, it's not going to have as nice of an eating uh, quality and eating texture. So if you can separate them, I think that's better. I'll trim this up. 
take off this silver skin. And now this piece makes beautiful baseball stakes again, too. Okay. So, you know, it's nicely sized. It's nice and round. It's nice and even. So uh, baseball stakes out of this guy are beautiful. And I think you can get uh, three or four, I'd say, out of it. So, yeah, one nice little piece. Nice and even. Nice size. Um, I also actually sent this home with one of my employees. Uh, for Easter at Christmas, she had wanted to do a, a beef tenderloin, a Wellington, uh, okay. but we sold out. <laughs> and right. I told her if we sold out over uh, Easter, that I would uh, I'd give her one of these to take home to try. Because to me, it's a beautiful cut. It's so lean in the middle. Uh, of course, it has some nice marbling, but there's no big chunks of fat or gristle running through it. So she tried it as a Wellington and she said it worked wonderfully. So, right, that's good to know, <laughs> right? Something like this, that's a, it's definitely not a tenderloin. It's definitely not tenderloin pricing uh, can be, you know, just as good or tender. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah. So versatile, right? Like maybe you could cut this into some, maybe not a uh, baseball size, but maybe one, one and a half inch pieces and do some uh, portioned Wellingtons out of it. Um, you don't have to say that it has beef tenderloin in it. You can say in the description that it has a uh, sirloin chateau sirloin in it or the sirloin eye in it or something uh, to make it sound uh, nice. But yeah, you don't have to lie about what you're serving and just call it something nice. But okay, so I tied this just to keep it that nice round shape. So when we cut our baseballs, they don't fall flat. I want it to be nice and thick. So oh, I got three, yeah, three nice big ones out of that there. And then, of course, I'll have my little bit of kebab meat here, too. The kebab. Kebab. Kebab meat. <laughs> I think I lost my kebab sticks as well, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for our baseball cut sirloin, that's about 11 ounces there. And we're about 10 and 10. So if you're aiming for something about 10 ounces, you know, it's like inch and a half, two inches thick, nice baseball cut nice. there. So that's a beautiful cut to have on the menu. Ooh. A little harder to cook though, of course, right? Like that one, you'll have to probably start it in a pan or on the grill and then finish it in the oven to get it at the, the consistency or the temperature that the customer is looking for. Um, but beautiful, delicious, tasty, tender, lean, Lots of good selling points. So last piece we have here is, so the center of the sirloin now. Uh, I have a little bit of trimming still to do. There's still some fat and some gristle on the back. And then the, the, the back end of it as well, I don't know how like deep, but there is a lot of connective tissues and gristle and silver skin in the middle here. So you will lose maybe an inch and a half off the end of that, but you can't get some more kebab meat out of it. So don't worry too much. So we'll clean up this, the last little bit of silver skin on the outside. Um, and then I have seen as well, if, if you really are selling a lot of uh, baseball cuts and they seem to be going good, um, mm -hmm. cut this in half again. You really? get two more, right? Two more pieces that are about the same size and, you know, cut them the same way. But it's all trimmed up on the bottom. There's not going to be a lot of gristle. We've taken most of it out except for just that end piece. Um, so yeah, you'll get some really nice baseball cuts if you continue to do it that way. We will cut a slightly different steak. Um, sometimes you want it to look, you know, wider on the plate, maybe to like take up more of the, the plate space. So we could aim for a slightly bigger piece of meat, you know, maybe visually to someone that looks bigger than this, even though it's probably almost the same size <laughs> weight wise, but Mm -hmm. That's just a nice look for, for a nice plate. So we can cut these ones straight down. I'm just doing these ones about one inch. And then, like I said, we will have to leave a bit on the end because then it starts getting into more of the gristle and silver skin down here. It's not going to be as nice of eating there. So that can be okay. all for kebabs. But we got four beautiful steaks here. Right, like I was saying, not not any gristle or extra silver skin running through them. Just the marbling, just the nice marbling that they have in them. So that's a beautiful 
uh, steak cover or plate covering steak. That would be even 12 ounces. So yeah, if you're looking for a smaller one, cut those in half again too, and then you'll have, you know, two six ounces. Also a nice, beautiful little side. That would be great for me. That's all I really need most of the time. Great salad steak, you know, to serve on top of a salad. So lots of options for this then. Got some bigger 12 ounces, a couple of nice six ounces, and then we'll get into our kebabs last. I might have to call someone and see if they can bring me my kebab sticks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so yeah, I just, again, when we're talking about doing your own butchering uh, in-house, there is more to think about, right? Than just, mm -hmm. I want to cut my own steaks. Because if you can't use what you've cut off, then you're in trouble. Um, with something like the sirloin, the yield can be like 50%, sometimes only 40%. So you're losing oh. quite a bit. Exactly. But if you're smart, like I said, if you're using this to make a, a more flavorful broth, if you can use uh, the fat on top of your roast or grind it into your burgers, uh, and then trying to do, you know, a good amount of kebabs out of it or uh your stir fry or your fajitas you know so just having just having that plan right mm -hmm. yeah so the last little bit here for trimming I'll get a couple pieces off of this end but yeah i have a I have a good amount of kebab meat here right but but like i was saying depending how many you're going through you could make it an entree and have some bigger skewers uh, but when I was looking at it, I just thought, like, what a great way to have an appy, uh, maybe having, like, three different marinades. So you have three little skewers. Hey, Kenzie. She doesn't want to hear me. She has her headphones in, too. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll probably, we can probably just imagine what this would look like. But I would say, honestly, just putting a few little pieces onto each stick. Mm -hmm. You know, you get three little... There's three, and I have three. So how many kebabs are we gonna get out of this? Three, two, four, six, eight. So we got 12 out of one piece. So that's not bad. So that would be maybe if you do three per serving, that gives you math, four, ser four, <laughs> four servings. <laughs> Yeah, right. And you can you could have a nice seasoning. I think especially now in the summer, it's grill time, right? So maybe moving away from things like surprise and trying to do something that's a little nicer of a grill. Uh, have one that's just a nice peppercorn seasoning. Have one that's in like a, a Asian marinade, and then have one that's more herby. You know, like do a little a trio mixture. I think could be a great idea for for that. So yeah. Awesome. So that's awesome. all the goodies we have. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Did, Taryn. You're I, welcome. I, I, there's so much great tips and ideas here. It's unbelievable. So thanks again Good. for everything. Good. You're welcome. Did you have any other questions or anything? Today? Uh, doesn't look like it, but <laughs> okay. you know what? Cool. Thanks again and tune in to more of The Little Butcher as uh, we have Taryn back later this summer. But uh, thanks again. And tomorrow we're back with SVK with more shows. We got a huge show tomorrow on the food inflation and really learning what, what's happening with uh, food prices and what's what you should do. So it's really that simple. So anyways, that Taryn. interesting, yeah. Thanks, Yeah, it Jay. should be really good. Thanks again. Yeah. And to everyone else, tune in. We're live All every right. week. So Thanks, take guys. care. Thanks Bye. so much.